Good morning, children. Welcome to another session of uh, class 10 biology. Uh, we are going to start another uh, uh, video lesson of biology and our uh, chapter will be the same one that is structure of chromosomes, cell cycle and cell division. This is part 3. Okay. So, uh, in this session or in, uh, rather previous session we talked about or we discussed about uh, the cell cycle. We started with the cell cycle, isn't it? And uh, under the cell cycle, we uh, I told you that there are two phases mainly. Cell cycle consists of two phases. There is the first is the non-dividing phase where the cell doesn't divide, just prepares itself to divide. That is called the interphase. And the another part or the second part of the cell cycle is the M phase or mitosis. We are not going to discuss too much now about meiosis. Today we will discuss about mitosis mainly, okay? which is a dividing phase where the cell divides. Okay, What are the different events which take place during this division? We will discuss about all these things. Now, before starting children, I would like to tell you that what we discussed about interphase, let me just uh, have a recap of that. What we discussed about interphase is that it is it was some it was also called as the resting phase. Why was it called as resting phase? Because there no uh, this uh, actually the chromosomes there were means too much of uh, activity was not seen or too much of change was not seen in these chromosomes. And that is why it was considered that it was a very, uh, means the cell was in rest position. So, it was called resting phase. But later on it was, uh, the word has been changed and it is uh, given a new term that is preparatory phase. Okay, why preparatory phase? Because the cell prepares itself before undergoing division, it prepares itself so that all the materials and everything which are required for cell division will be there present in the uh, cell, okay, which will be, uh, which will go, uh, means undergo division. And in interphase, we know that the chromosomes are uh, mainly uh, thread-like, I mean, or not rather chromosomes, the chromatin fibers are uh, thread-like. And uh, there are three phases of interphase, the first growth phase or G1 phase, the synthesis phase or the S phase, and the second growth phase or the G2 phase. In the First growth phase, RNA and proteins are synthesized and the volume of the cytoplasm increases, okay. And mitochondria and chloroplast, they also divide here. And the two organelles have their own DNA. Who have their own DNA? Mitochondria and chloroplast, okay. In the synthesis phase, we discuss is a very important phase whereby the chromosomes are duplicated. That is, it, is, it doubles its uh, DNA. The DNA is synthesized double, means it becomes double. And in the uh, second growth phase, what happens? It is a very short one and uh, RNA and proteins are synthesized, um, continue to be synthesized more and more in this phase. And after the second growth phase, the um, uh, cell undergoes the next phase that is the dividing phase, that is mitosis, okay. So, let us start with my mitosis children, okay. Now, this is the division phase, that is why I have written cell division here, okay. The division phase, that means the cell is already prepared, all the things which are materials which are required for the division is already there in the cell, now it will divide. So, there are two main types of cell division, okay. Two types of cell division are there, we will learn first that what are the two types of cell division, okay, in uh, eukaryotes or in any, any animal. Now, mitosis is the first one, okay, and the meiosis is the second one. Please mark the spellings. Mitosis is easy. Meiosis, many of you make wrong. It is me, first of all, but whenever you talk about myself, it is me, M-E-Me, -me, I-O-S-I-S, meiosis. Now, mitosis is, it leads to the production of diploid cells for growth and development, okay? Now, diploid cells, though I have given a rough idea in the previous lesson, then also I have placed some, some diagrams to make you understand about diploid and haploid cells for growth and development. Now, remember one thing, children, that mitosis is only for growth and development, not for reproduction or anything, okay? Mitosis is only for growth and development. That is, your body will grow, any damage occurs in your body parts, that is meant, all these things are done by mitosis process. And meiosis is done only leads to the production of haploid cells. Haploid means the chromosome number will be half. I will discuss about this thing in detail. Or gametes are produced by this meiosis process. That means it under, it is, it is taken, it takes place in reproductive cells, okay. Only in the reproductive cells which will lead to the formation of gametes, there only this uh, meiosis takes place. Now, what do you mean by haploid and diploid? Listen very carefully children because these things will make your concept very clear. Otherwise, you will not understand the things later on, okay. Now, first of all haploid and see diploid. See the diagram A which I have placed here, okay. See haploid. One set of chromosomes, see, 
pink one, one, uh, the purple or blue, whatever you tell, is uh, the say, uh, uh, one set. It is also one set, and the yellow one also one set. So this is haploid. And can you see diploid? See two each, pink one two. So two pre are present. Uh, similarly, the blue one is also two, and the yellow one is also two. So we see that in case of haploid, half the number of chromosomes are present. These are all chromosomes. Okay, this uh, pink, blue, and yellow are all chromosomes, and these chromosomes are present half in or one of the sets is present of each of the chromosome in haploid cells and in diploid cells two number are present okay similarly there are triploid tetraploid uh, pentaploid or polyploidy which we call which you will learn in higher classes that is in class uh, uh, 11 and 12 now for the time being you have only haploid and diploid so what we understood about haploid and diploid that the cells which have only one chromosome or one set of chromosomes rather it is known as a haploid okay that is in humans the number of uh, uh, that is number will be 23 only that is which is present in only gametes that is sperm and ova okay diploid cells have two sets of chromosomes and in humans if diploid we tell haploid is always represented by n okay small n and diploid is always represented by n into Two, that is 2n okay that is 46 okay 46 chromosomes in humans we have I will elaborate this one okay in humans all body cells other than the gametes are diploid that is double the set of chromosomes are present now see in the diagram B you can see that I have put a cells full chromosomes all the chromosomes which are present in a human cell in a human cell I, I have shown here see we have in human beings I told you there are 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs I told you in the earlier video isn't it now you can see here I have it is written 1 2 3 4 like this 22 and this sex chromosomes that is x x and x y depending upon the uh, gender or the sex of the male uh, who, whoever it is male or female either it will be x x if female and x y in case of males okay now see that here this is a diploid cell shown diploid means see chromosome number one has two uh, chromosomes of each chromosome number two has again two chromosome three number has again two chromosome four has again two uh, of each same type chromosome five also has uh, two of same type similarly up to 22 two sets are present of each chromosome can you see and XX and XY also has two each, though XX is same and XY is different, okay. Then also they have a pair of each. This is a diploid set. And if it has to be haploid set, then what will happen? Then what will happen? This chromosome number one will have only this one blue line, okay. Chromosome number, chromosome number, sorry, chromosome number two will have only one uh, blue line, like that, uh, okay. See, all the shapes and sizes are different of all the chromosomes, okay. Now, if haploid, then only one of this chromosome number one will be present. Chromosome number two will also have one. Chromosome th number three also will have uh, one. Similarly, likewise, up to 22, it will have one, one, if haploid. And this X chromosome or this sex chromosome, that is XX if female and XY if um, uh, male, they will also have one, one E, that either X in uh, either X or either Y, okay. So, this is how deep haploid and diploid, what is the difference between haploid cells and diploid cells? Haploid cells will ha be having half the chromosome number and diploid cells will be having always double the chromosome number. So, we are all diploid organisms, human beings are diploid organisms and how many chromosomes we have? 46. How many chromosome pairs we have? 23 because 43, 40, sorry, 46 if we divide it comes to 23. So, 23 plus 23 is equal to? 46. So, we have 23 pairs. Okay. Clear? All the, uh, this one children. Now, we will get to go into the next slide. Now, we discussed about mitosis and meiosis. There are two uh, cell uh, type of cell division out of which today we will discuss only mitosis. Okay. Mitosis occur only in the where? Body cells that is which is also body cells are also known as somatic cells. S-O-M-A-T-I-C. Okay. Somatic cells. Now, uh, in mitosis what happens? So, you need to understand what happens in mitosis. Now, mitosis it is a cell division in which one parent cell divides into two identical daughter cells. Now, what happens in mitosis? One parent cell will divide into two identical, very, very important term identical. Identical means same daughter cells. 
means everything chromosome number size size means not the sh uh, means shape wise everything will be same size a bit smaller in the interface again when it divides and goes into the interface means after dividing it uh, regains its cytoplasm the volume of cytoplasm in increases as i told you in first growth phase of interface and then again the same type of uh, this uh, it occurs the same uh, size now one parent cell will divide into two identical daughter cells two identical very important two and identical very important okay daughter cells daughter parent now children one more thing i'll uh, tell you about uh, this daughter and parent part now here these daughter and parent words are used uh, conventionally okay now that this doesn't mean that this is the parent or this is the daughter now see what what happens in this uh, parent you know that the parent cell divides to form the two daughter cells does is there any existence of the parent cell after formation of the two daughter cells no why because the parent cell only divides into two daughter cells and these two terms are just used conventionally to make you understand that these are the parents from which two smaller cells result okay that is the only uh, means uh, that that's why these two terms are used there is no other reason why parent and daughter cells uh, these two terms are used now uh, one more very important point the second point the same chromosome number is maintained in each cell division the chromosome number remains the same in case of mitosis the chromosome number does not change okay now mitosis i told you chromosome number so if uh, we are having uh, 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs rather if we are having 23 pairs or whatever you say 46 chromosomes our chromosome number means the parent cell is having 46 so the daughter cell will also be having 46 chromosomes okay clear that is the same chromosome number is maintained very important point okay mitosis is completed in two phases what are the two phases of mitosis it is it has it is divided into two phases what are they karyokinesis and cytokinesis karyokinesis means division of nucleus and cytokinesis means division of cytoplasm karyon means nucleus and kinesis means splitting that's why division of nucleus it is this part only includes the division of the nucleus the events which take place in the division of nucleus and cytokinesis cyto means they are talking about a cytoplasm and kinesis means splitting so division of the cytoplasm let us go to the next slide okay now we'll discuss about karyokinesis first and then we'll come to cytokinesis what is karyokinesis all about i told you it is division of nucleus so we will deal with the nucleus only mainly here okay now this karyokinesis first we took that cell cycle okay cell cycle is divided into interphase and the dividing phase or the mitosis okay now interphase was divided into again three phases that is first growth phase synthesis phase and second growth phase and this uh, the second part of cell cycle that is the mitosis is divided into again karyokinesis cytokinesis karyokinesis is again divided into four phases it is a continuous uh, process okay occurs in four continuous phases continuous phases i'll explain first let me talk about the phases what are the four phases of mitosis prophase metaphase anaphase telophase sequence very important or logical sequence you need to arrange okay sometimes questions are given what is a sequence so uh, prophase metaphase anaphase telophase then cytokinesis so these prophase metaphase anaphase telophase are actually what Par phases of karyokinesis okay now uh, these uh, i have written there you can see four continuous phases why continuous phases continuous means what they are trying to tell here that you cannot demarcate that this is this up to this part is prophase you cannot demarcate that this is up to metaphase what happens actually these phases tend to overlap each other prophase uh, is going on then only metaphase also starts little by uh, little uh, little bit metaphase is going on anaphase also starts along with it so you cannot demarcate that from here to here is prophase from here to here is metaphase no yes you can mark demarcate the events which take place okay that's why it is a continuous process okay now we'll first discuss about the uh, prophase before that i want to tell you that interphase has the chromatin or chromatin fibers as long threads okay you know that now we come to prophase first here i have given diagrams also so when i read out please follow the diagrams which is given i have given early prophase and late prophase both okay now chromosomes become short and thick you can see that the chromosomes have become shorter and thicker the chromatin fibers have become uh, formed chromosome like structure thicker and shorter chromosomes has duplicated to form chromatids the chromatin fibers already had duplicated in the interphase in the s phase or synthesis phase now chromosomes have duplicated to form 
chromatids. Can you see that chromatids are formed? I told you chromatids, remember? Chromosome is X-shaped structure. The, in the middle, the centromere is there. Each line of the or each, each strand of the chromosome is known as 1-1 one, one chromatid. So, one chromosome consists of how many chromatids? Two, okay? The sister chromatids remain attached to each other at a small region called the centromere. This you are aware of, okay? Centrosome in animal cell. Now, children, one more thing I am telling you very clearly. This we are discussing fully animal cell, okay? The, all the description which are give, we are giving is, as, uh, is on the basis of animal cell, not on the basis of plant cell, okay? Now, uh, centrosome in animal cell splits into two along with the simultaneous duplication of the centriole. They are talking of the centrosome. Centrosome means that yellow structure which you can see in the diagram, okay? The centrosome, you can see it has split into two. Duplication of centrioles also have taken place. There are two on the, which are moving apart, okay? The daughter centrioles move apart and occupy the opposite poles. Poles here means what? Poles here does, does, doesn't refer to any other thing, but just it wants uh, means want to tell you that it means the extremities of to an axis. Means if I draw an axis in between this uh, lengthwise, one side uh, uh, is one pole and the other side is other pole. So north pole, south pole, as we have in our uh, in when we talk about Earth. Similarly, here also poles. So one of the centrioles, daughter centrioles rather, because they have duplicated. Okay, the centrium uh, centriole. Uh, splits and uh, the centrioles duplicate itself and one centriole moves to one pole and the other centriole, daughter centriole moves to the other pole. Each centriole is surrounded by radiating rays which is called aster. Aster means centriole plus the rays which are the small rays. Can you see that from this each centriole some smaller rays have come out? I am not talking about the bigger ones. Bigger one has have different name. They are called spindle fibers. Okay. I have discussed about spindle fibers earlier. I have uh, given you the diagram earlier. Now we will discuss it in detail. Now you can see that from each of the centrioles, daughter centrioles rather, from each of the daughter centrioles, some small, small rays has, have, a, have come out outside, on the outer side. Those along with the centriole are known as the aster. Means centriole plus the radiating rays equal to aster. Okay. Now, Fibers appear between the two daughter centrioles. You can see big fibers are appearing between the daughter centrioles, which are called spindle fibers. Okay, these are called spindle fibers. The nuclear membrane and the nucleolus disappear. Okay, you can see in the late prophase, the nucleolus and the nuclear membrane have disappeared. Okay, the duplicated chromosomes start moving towards the equator. Now, which will be the equator? You know, when you consider Arctic and Antarctic, you know that in between is the equator. Similarly, you can see the two poles on the two sides, that is the two daughter centrioles on the two poles. And in between, that is the middle line perpendicular to it, will be the equator naturally. So, equator again is, is also a conventional term just to make you understand the middle portion or the middle portion of the cell. Now, which is perpendicular to the two poles, okay? That is the equator. So, the duplicated chromosomes, you know that chromosomes are already duplicated. Now, they migrate, they start migrating. They have not mi totally migrated. They, have, they start migrating towards the equator. Means they will be arranged in the equatorial plate. In the next phase, we will come to see that. So, what happens here? Well, very important children, some events, important events of the prophase, they tell you to write, okay? And diagrams, very important along with labeling. Uh, they ask you to draw the diagrams, okay, prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase and the sequence also very important. Let us go into the next slide. Now, here we will start with metaphase. Metaphase is a very short phase, prophase is a very long phase, okay, telophase and prophase are very big phases and telophase and anaphase, metaphase is the smallest one, anaphase is a little bit bigger than metaphase. Now, metaphase. Each chromosome gets attached to the spindle by its centromere, by its centromere, uh, this uh, centromere, you know, the constricted part of the uh, chromosome, each chromosome gets attached to the spindle. I told you uh, from the two daughter centrioles in the middle part, in the interior part, bigger fibers come out which are known as the spindle fibers and on the outer sides are smaller fibers which are the astral rays, okay. Now, chromosomes line up in one, uh, the eye, eye is missed here, line up in one plane at the equator. Now, you can see here that uh, they are, uh, see the diagram, uh, metaphase, prometaphase and metaphase. Come to metaphase directly, okay? There is a fourth diagram from, uh, or the first diagram below, the second line, that is first diagram, metaphase. You can see they have arranged in the equatorial plane, metaphase, follow metaphase where it is. 
okay, the uh, bottom line of the diagram. Uh, here you can see that they have arranged, the chromosomes have arranged themselves in the equatorial line, in the equatorial plane, that is, which is perpendicular to the two poles. Okay? This is the main event of metaphase. That is, if you are asked, name the phase in which the chromosomes attach or arrange themselves in the equatorial plane, it will be metaphase. Now come to anaphase. Centromere attaching the two chromatids divides or splits. Now, what happens? The centromere which attaches the two chromatids. You know that the two chromatids are there in one chromosome and in between they are attached with the help of the centromere. Now, this centromere splits. Okay, the, uh, It divides and splits. What happens? The two sister chromatids of each chromosome now separate because of the separation of the centromere because the centromere only attaches or helps the two chromatids of a chromosome to remain attached with each other. Now, whenever this uh, centromere splits, what will happen? The two sister chromatids will also become separate and will be pulled apart towards the opposite poles by shortening of the spindle fibers. Now, how do they, can you see that uh, in anaphase, you can see the two, uh, they are separated, means uh, one half and the other half, the two chromatids are separate by the separation of the centromere and these two chromatids are the daughter chromosomes or the chromatids okay because the chromosomes have separated from in uh, from the centromere now they are starting to move towards the opposite poles follow anaphase what you can see in anaphase they are starting to move towards the opposite poles now one half which is towards one pole will be pulled to uh, to its uh, side of the pole and the other half which is to other pole will be pulled to the other side of the pole now, what will happen? Why this pulling occurs? Because of the shortening of the spindle fibers. You can see those yellow, yellow bigger fibers. They are attached to the centromere of the chromatids, daughter chromatids. So, they are getting it pulled as if uh, somebody has tied a rope around your uh, uh, middle portion of your body and they are trying to pull you, okay, like that. So, they are trying, they, they will be pulled towards the poles, opposite poles. And in the anaphase only, what happens? A light furrow starts to appear, okay, in the middle of the cell membrane in the animal cell. You can see the, uh, in the diagrams in the book also, very nice and clear diagrams are given in your book. A furrow also starts in the anaphase only sometimes. This furrow uh, means, ma means is the indication that the next phase has already started in the anaphase itself. That's why I told it is a continuous process. Now come to the telophase. Telophase, what happens? The two sets of daughter chromosomes reach the opposite poles. Now, what will happen? The uh, two chromosome, the daughter chromosomes which were separating from the middle and migrating towards the opposite poles, they have now reached in the, to the opposite poles of their, uh, uh, to the opposite side of their poles. Now, what will happen? The spindle fibers will disappear in this phase. The chromatids become thin and form chromatin fibers. Now, you know that the chromatids are much more condensed and they will now uncoil and form chromatin fibers again because the division has already is over. Nuclear membrane is again formed and it appears cleavage furrow starts deepening in the animal cell. You can see that in the telophase, a cleavage furrow has already appeared from the sides, from the to, uh, side that is from the cell membrane, a uh, furrow appears and starts to deepen in the animal cell and the nucleoli also reappears which had already disappeared again it starts appearing okay all the diagrams you have to see in the book also very nicely given follow the diagrams and read the points it will be easier for you to understand Let us here we have cytokinesis what is there in cytokinesis cytokinesis means what i told you division of cytoplasm what happens in cytoplasm division in cytokinesis cleavage furrow deepens totally and in the animal cell and separates. So, you, know, you can see that in this diagram alongside which I have given, see the chromatids, the daughter chromatids rather, they have migrated towards the opposite poles totally. To, they have come near and, and, uh, and a furrow has already appeared which separates into two daughter cells, okay, and separates the two daughter cells. So, two daughter cells are formed like this and the two daughter cells which are formed will be exactly identical having the same chromosome number as their parents, okay. They will be not different from their parents, they will be same as their parents. Now, what is the difference between mitosis in case of plants and the mitosis in case of animals? Now, difference between mitosis in plants and animals is a bit hazy, but you will be able to understand what is written there, okay, children? So, what happens? Centrioles are, okay, one more thing I wanted to tell you that, uh, okay, let us uh, start with this uh, simultaneously, I will explain this. Now, uh, 
centrioles are absent in case of plants okay you know that centrioles are not present in plants in case of animals centrioles are present from which which divide uh, to form the spindle fibers in case of plants also spindle fibers are formed but centrioles do not form the microtubules are there which form it microtubules are cytoskeletal structures you will come to learn about all these things in the higher classes okay so centrioles are uh, present in animal cells which help in the formation of spindle fibers spindle fibers uh, what is their function we uh, read when we were re reading the structure of chromosome that they help in attaching uh, to the centromere and uh, during cell division it plays in uh, a significant role asters are not formed in case of plant cell very important again asters are formed i told you what are asters on the outer side of the centriole you can see some smaller rays are formed they are known as the aster okay they are formed in case of animals but not formed in case of plants cell division involves formation of cell plate in case of uh, in case of uh, plants and in case of animals cleavage of the cytoplasm now this is a very important difference between animals and plants in case of cell division now in case of animals i told you children that um, the uh, cytoplasm gives a cleavage from the outer end okay from the outer side and which deepens and uh, finally pinches of the two daughter cells apart okay this is for animal cell in case of plant cells this cannot happen why this cannot happen can anybody just think about or uh, brainstorm yourself uh, to think why is cleavage from the outer side cannot happen in plant cell but it is happening in animal cell Okay, I will give you the answer. The answer is that in case of plant cell, one additional layer is there, you all know, which is cell wall, which is a very rigid one. So, that is why from the outer side, no cleavage can occur to pinch of the cytoplasm, okay, into two parts of forming two daughter cells. That is why in case of plant cell, in between or that is when the uh, chrom sister chromatids migrate towards the poles, in between them, the, these two, you can see in your diagrams, which is given in the book, a cell plate occurs a cell plate comes into the scene cell plate are these are mainly formed by the golgi uh, vesicles uh, in between golgi vesicles form these uh, cell plate and ultimately from the between to the outer side means it moves centrifugally from between to the outer end it uh, separates the two cells so cell plate means uh, cell division or cytokinesis rather cytokinesis in plant cell occur by the formation of cell plate and in animals it occurs by the cleavage of the cytoplasm okay or the furrowing of the cytoplasm okay occurs mainly in meristems that is meristematic tissue where plant growth mainly takes place and in case of animals uh, this mitosis occurs throughout the body any tissue of the body okay this is all about the sire this uh, process of mitosis children go through the diagrams when you read the points of different phases you should also read or look at the diagrams otherwise you, it will be a little problematic for you to understand diagrams each phase from prophase metaphase anaphase telophase interphase also very very important all are given nicely in your book have a look okay and if you want to know that what are spindle fibers actually spindle fibers are cytoskeletal structures okay May they are mainly present in eukaryotic cytoskeletal means you know that we also have a skeleton of our own if we did not have bones our muscles would not hold our body straight like this similarly to give shape and support to the cell there are some cytoskeletal structures skeletal structures which are present in the cell that's why known as cytoskeletal structures they are called the spindles and uh, uh, the spindle fibers rather okay and they help in attaching uh, to the chromosomes during cell division okay let us go into the next slide now we'll talk about the significance of mitosis what happens in mitosis uh, or what is the importance of mitosis in uh, uh, animals and plant cell growth or increase in the body size due to formation of new cells in the tissues now what happens you know that you were when you were born you were very small now you have become this much big how did you grow this much big because of division of cells so growth or increase in the body size is due to the formation of new cells which occur by mitosis and i have already told you that mitosis occurs only in somatic cells okay uh, that is body cells now repair and damage of wounded tissue you are always having uh, uh, means uh, some uh, damaged tissues are there or cells are there in your body which are generally lost and these lost cells are renewed with the help of this process of mitosis by the division of cells Re replacement of old and dead cells some cells are totally dead and worn out they are not able to work anymore so they are replaced by the process of cell division which is mitosis because it is in the body cells that's why mitosis asexual reproduction is another uh, process which occurs by this process of mitosis which mainly occurs in unicellular organisms like amoeba 
and uh, all these uh, animals they undergo this mitosis process so as for asexual reproduction is a process which occurs in unicellular organisms like uh, amoeba and all amoeba yeast and all these uh, organisms and thus lead to the formation of two daughter cells maintains the same chromosome number very important chromosome number is doubled in case of might uh, means uh, in case of uh, in in synthesis phase it is double now that's why i need uh, i was con uh, continuously concentrating on the synthesis phase that uh, listen, listen children if the in the synthesis phase of interphase if the chromosome number would not have doubled itself then what would happen two daughter cells would be formed but one of the daughter cell would be having all the chromosome of the parents and the other daughter cell will not be having anything that's why it is very important for the chromosome number or the chromatids to or chrom uh, chromatin fibers to duplicate itself to double itself so that when mitosis or cell division occurs the chromosome number is halved between the or uh, equ uh, equally divided between the two daughter cells okay that's why the chromosomes duplicate so after interphase comes the mitosis and after interphase only will come the meiosis when we'll study meiosis so this is all about today's lesson children uh, that's all for today uh, i'll not be discussing any more actually too much of uh, material is there to understand in this phase so please go through the lesson very nicely whatever i have told listen to the uh, class repeatedly so that you understand any problems you have you go through the uh, video lesson listen repeatedly i think it will be helpful you'll be able to understand please learn the sequences what are the sequences like uh, uh, in case of karyokinesis, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and then cytokinesis occurs. What is the difference between cytokinesis in plants and animal cells? That is a very important question which is asked. So, all these things you have to learn, children. Okay. So, you go through this lesson properly. I'll be back very soon with another video lesson. Okay. Till then, goodbye and thank you.